to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And uh, the legislative season is continuing around the country, and it's very disturbing. The South Dakota legislature had a veritable hate fest against LGBT people, but we'll try to update you about uh, all the trouble scenes. Some good news, some bad news, and of course some good news and some bad news in the presidential election season. We will tell you how LGBT issues are playing out among the various candidates. In New York State, Governor Andrew Cuomo has taken executive action to stop conversion ther therapy for minors as far as he can. Uh, the convicted gay basher in Philadelphia, Catherine Knott, has uh, been taken off to jail for a few months. A federal judge in Kentucky is going to let uh, Kim Davis off the hook for not signing her name to marriage licenses. Uh, there's a tiny window that, make that may make that not true, but we'll talk about that. The Super Bowl uh, went particularly gay, at least at halftime, but then there's this other story about a gay guy who got bashed in San Francisco by possible Super Bowl attendees. We'll give you those details. And you probably saw Congress members scolding Martin Shkreli, the poster boy for uh, uh, bad uh, drug executives, uh, but uh, they're doing nothing to relieve us from overpriced prescription drugs. So we're going to scold them. <laughs> well, the presidential candidates are making a lot of promises, but I remain perplexed about how they're really going to pull it off. Let's do something, folks. Well, let's start. Before we get to all that in national politics, let's uh, keep our focus on the states, because that's really where the action is at the moment. Sure. State by state, 150 bad LGBT-related bills in 30 states. Yeah. Uh, so there was action across the country in several states this week. And we have a Chiron up there on the screen that says, if you want to track the legislation in your state, go to equalityfederation.org, and they have, they have everything that's going on in every state. And again, we, we beat back most of these bills last year, but since then... Supreme Court allowed us to get married, and it's got people really upset, and, that, and some of these bills are passing in states where they didn't pass before. And frankly, this is all connected to presidential politics, too, and national politics across the board, and, the, and a national view by the right wing. But let's, let's get to the details of this, and we can explain more of that sure. as we go along. Well, in, in South Dakota, uh, they, uh, the House passed uh, special protections for those who believe marriage is between a man and a woman, people who disapprove of trans people, or believe that sexual relations should be limited to marriage. It, it would allow... It uh, specifies those categories. Yes, it would allow state <laughs> contractors, including homeless shelters, to uh, turn away LGBT people. Uh, and then it has this phrase. This is the kind of stuff that's passing. The terms male or man and female or woman refer to distinct and immutable biological sexes that are determined by anatomy and genetics by the time of birth. It's, I mean, this is in very intensely anti-transgender. Uh, what are intersex people going to do with that kind exactly. of language? Uh, but they really, they specifically in this bill protect the viewpoint of those who uh, believe that marriage is uh, just for male-female couples. How is that possibly constitutional? Well, we're going to find out. Well, uh, my question is, as we go through all this and watch this legislation, some of it passing, some of it not, uh, how does this get challenged? Does it have to be repealed by a different legislature we elect? Is it challengeable in court? Is this stuff unconstitutional, either at the state level or nationally? Uh, th these are real issues we're going to have to confront. And again, people are entitled to their beliefs, but in the in the public spaces, uh, when there where there are not where there are non-discrimination laws, you're not allowed to discriminate. 
Right. They are broadening yes. the categories of uh, who's allowed to discriminate and how. And this is almost all coming from states where uh, we're not protected in the first place. Well, sure. That's why we need we a were. federal LGBT rights law. The Equality Act, it's called. <laughs> it's in Congress. It would solve a lot of these problems, I would hope. And you wonder sometimes how they could be passing this stuff. Well, in Indiana, where they've been going back and forth on these bills, and they we beat back some bills last week, and, and some were withdrawn, bad bills. The right wing is now so upset about that that they are threatening to primary Republican legislators who were not sufficiently anti-gay. Yes, they were proposing these LGBT rights laws, which didn't cover transgenders, which had all kinds of religious freedom exemptions, but that wasn't good enough for the right wing, and they're ready to primary the guy. So they are gonna, they're going to uh, threaten that, and, uh, and of course they have lawsuits going on to try to expand their rights. Now, there was a lot of action in Indiana last year. We all remember it with Governor Pence, and the business leaders were very upset, and they're very deeply worried now. But now this is happening all across the country. The yep. focus is not on Indiana. Uh, it's, it's everywhere. It's happening in Georgia and South Dakota and all these other states. And I don't think our movement is, I mean, there are, there are many good people in these states who are trying to beat these things back. And specifically in Indiana, the Democrats yes. are saying we're not giving up. We're going to continue to push good legislation. And the LGBT movement, too. But I don't think our national movement is strong enough to head off all of these things. But they are trying. Yes. But we all, uh, in fact, we all have to get involved in this. I was going to save this, but uh, let me give it to you now. There is a new uh, coalition called the National Equality Action Team. A lot of the veterans of the marriage movement have gotten together and are taking on these fights uh, as the next step. And so they put up a website called theneat.org. How do you which spell is that? N E A T. Okay. Uh, National Equality Action Team. Uh, and this is a, a function, Freedom for All Americans is leading this. They are the uh, ones lobbying for good bills across the country and the Equality Act. And this website is a way for people to start dipping their toe into getting involved in these fights locally. A lot of state organizations around the country are listed on this website and you can find out how to get involved in your area or perhaps start an effort in your area. Theneat.org. Okay. And uh, there is some good news, uh, and I bet you never thought you'd hear on this show good news from Oklahoma, uh, <laughs> or especially c when it concerns good news from Sally Kern, yep. who was a total anti-gay bigot, but she po polled her anti-LGBT youth bill because she felt it might increase teen abortions. <laughs> the bill was basically, if you want to get counseled about any of anything related to sexuality, you got to wait 24 hours and talk to your parent, get par parental permission. Yes. And she thought it could lead to more teen abortions. It was targeted at uh, any discussion of LGBT issues in school by saying the parents had to be informed first. But yes, it had these unintended consequences for Sally. Uh, meanwhile, a uh, and Oklahoma continues to have dozens. Twenty-five of, more. Yeah, but a bad uh, religious freedom restoration act kind of bill was beaten back in Oklahoma last week. Two more bills that were on the docket have been postponed, so that's still under consideration. But th but that's a little victory. By the way, the word we were getting from activists in South Dakota was forget about even lobbying the legislature. Call the governor and try to get him to veto this because our legislature is fairly hopeless. Absolutely. All right. In, uh, now Michigan did something is doing something weird. Uh, the Senate essentially reaffirmed the sodomy law, the unconstitutional sodomy law. In uh, the process of passing a, a bill against animal abuse. Exactly. And they thought, and this guy said, if you want if you want me to, you know, vote, put up a bill that would get rid of all these old laws, okay, but I don't want to hurt my bill by changing the law about sodomy. Because the law against sodomy it, it also included laws against bestiality. So, uh, Basically, you know, he's so intense. It was a mess. Uh, but there was a little firestorm raised around this when people realized that they had reconfirmed the unconstitutional sodomy law, which in fact had been outlawed by the Supreme Court Lawrence v. Texas opinion. So it's a sodomy, it, as in many states, it's still on the books, it's unenforceable. 
But the fact that it's still on the books means that cops tend to say, oh, I didn't know it was unconstitutional, and right. they still arrest people. Correct. Uh, so it's important to get it off the books. Uh, and they had just simply reconfirmed it in the midst of this other legislation. So now, since there was a little firestorm, they are going to uh, go back and take the sodomy portion out of uh, the bill. But, uh, and of course, if the law passes, uh, which is about animal abuse, you'll be banned from owning a pet for five years. <laughs> now, how about banning the governor? Am from, I crazy how, to think that's wrong? How about ban how about banning the, how about banning how about banning uh, uh, the, uh, the governor from holding office for five years <laughs> for poisoning the people of Flint. Exactly. That would be nice. How about abuse of the people of Flint? Uh, there, Criminal uh, abuse. As we tape here on Wednesday afternoon, they're holding a big rally in Georgia, yeah. in Atlanta. In, well, the evangelicals are holding yes, a big rally. Yes, Franklin Graham, the Benham brothers. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, these are bills that are targeting us for discrimination. Yeah. Uh, they passed House committees. Uh, they let... Uh, religious nonprofits opt, opt out of serving LGBT people. It's all this religious freedom stuff. This is what we're up against. Uh, state after state after state. Franklin Graham says that same-sex marriage and transgender rights are major failures of our nation. Whoa. Well, in Florida, a Senate panel killed the LGBT rights bill for 2016. Uh, raising the issue of transgender people in locker rooms for yeah. about two hours. Uh, it, they even removed gender expression from the categories before they killed it. It's uh, outrageous. And a local uh, non-discrimination bill in Palm Bay, in Palm Bay, Florida, also failed. The city council there rejected a, a sexual orientation, gender identity, non-discrimination bill. They said it was not needed, it's well, special rights, one, bathrooms. No, yes, one, one idiot council member there, it, it, it lost four to one, said it would favor one group over another group. <laughs> No, that's not what non-discrimination is about, council member. It's about everybody being treated fairly. I, uh, you know, what do you do with these uh, ignorant, uh, bigoted statements? They, 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 they say these things, you know, to justify what they just did, which yeah. is evil. Yeah. And then years later, they, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I really, you know, blah, 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 blah. But it's fear and ignorance. Well, no, 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 no town in North Brevard County has passed a, a local ordinance. Other cities and uh, Palm and Bay is is on the east coast, southeast of Orlando, and uh, yeah, fairly rural. Um, in Washington their state where we are amazed at how much anti-LGBT yeah. legislation has been proposed yeah, we thought at the it was moment. pretty liberal up there. But the current expectation is that the bad uh, anti-transgender bill should fail, but the right wing is not so concerned about that because then they're just going to try to go to the ballot and repeal all anti-discrimination bills in the state of Washington. Okay. Uh, in, in and, a, well, go ahead. No, well, I'm looking for legislation. Um, well, in Maine, yeah, uh, it's not exactly legislation, but Governor LePage, and he is a piece of work up there. This Unbelievable. Right -winger. Yeah. He's a two-bit bigot. He stopped the State Human Rights Commission and the Department of Education from issuing rules protecting transgender students. So schools are instead being given guidelines that lack the force of law. Mm -hmm. But the head of the Principals Association said most of the schools already have these guidelines. They're way ahead of him. Yeah. It's a mystery how he got reelected, but uh, uh, he, he is a big friend of Chris Christie, <laughs> who thinks he's doing a bang-up job. However, Chris Christie is my nominee for Person of the Week yeah. for crushing Marco Rubio's hopes and dreams. You don't think, Thank you, you don't Chris think Christie. Terry Kirstead crushed Marco Rubio? <laughs> Well, we have a picture of Terry. Terry is this 50-year-old uh, gay guy in a bar. What's the name of the place? The Puritan Backroom Diner, yes. Andy's favorite uh, location in uh, There's New Hampshire. Terry waving his finger. There's yeah. Marco with, with, the, with his little son. Uh, Terry has a husband and three kids. And, and that's him with his mother there. And the husband's there, but not in the picture, I think, yes. unless he's the one but, in the oatmeal but, sweater. But Terry said to Marco, why do you want to put me back in the closet? And Rubio said, I don't. You can live any way you want. And Terry said he was married and he has kids and things. And Rubio's position was, we don't matter. 
So Rubio said, no, I just believe marriage is between a man and a woman. And Terry says, that's your belief. And Rubio says, I think uh, that's what the law sh should be. And if you don't, then you should have it changed by the legislature, which was done in New Hampshire, <laughs> by the way, Marco, years ago. And you, of course, want to, un and the Supreme Court. 2009. <laughs> another another uh, diner, in the, another uh, person in the same diner asked Rubio if Lindsey Graham was gay. Rubio <laughs> chuckled. No. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> oh, well. So Rub we, I had a lot more stuff about Rubio, but he's but as you say, he seems to be finished now. Uh, Although anything can happen this year. I, he's quoting me and making fun of me because that's I what I'm not. not saying to him. Well, no, it is true that anything can happen this year. <laughs> it but, is. But I think you know. People ask me uh, I, every day. Friends call me. <laughs> They usually call me around election time and say, who should I vote for? But now they're calling me and saying, well, what's going to happen? Who's going to win? <laughs> I said, don't be ridiculous. None of us know. None of us can predict. This is the craziest year, and anything could happen. Anything can happen, especially as events overtake things. If there's terrorist attacks, if the market crashes, those are the kinds of things that I think sway elections more than anything, because I think most people kind of know what they're going to do, uh, whether it's Democrat or Republican. People walked into the voting booth in New Hampshire this week having three choices that's, and deciding at the last second. That's New Hampshire. No, I they're think tip, that's, they're, they're, I think that is across they, the and board. It, and they also had a lot of choices. And people are saying, uh, you know, my first choice is Trump and my second choice is Bernie. Yes, people do say things like that. <laughs> yes, yes, they, they do. Yes, they do. It's a funny country. And we don't <laughs> understand it, but we're trying to sort it out. Funny is a euphemism for yes. crazy. Yes. Um, but, but really, I, uh, this, this business of trying to predict what's going to happen, forget it. I, I, forget it. I have said, and you have dismissed it, uh, that I think Trump has built up his negatives so much that he's, he's, he's not a viable national candidate. I think he could very well win the Republican nomination, and I think people would unite even behind Bernie Sanders uh, if, that's, if that's what happens. That's I the way I see it I think anything is possible, and it could all change overnight, and to think any of this is predictable is wrong. Uh, both both of the Democratic uh, candidates uh, made references to gay people in their in their speeches after the New Hampshire primary. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it was interesting to see that Hillary lost the women's vote in, in in New Hampshire. Well, what really interests me, yes, she did. Well, she's you know she's in trouble. She is in trouble because she is not personally appealing. Yeah. And because. But I thought she gave a good speech. I thought but... she get, her best speech of the week was her concession speech. But, uh, but, but Bernie she, has a has a uh, you know I mean we're we're not taking sides in this I'm just saying Bernie, Bernie makes has a clearer message uh, about you know it's all about wealth and equality and uh, and fighting the billionaires and all that kind of stuff and that's what seems to be appealing to people. I don't think it's just that I think it's that they see him as having a trustworthy passion. I think people vote for people they trust and and whose general attitude they like. I think people dismiss the details of candidates all the time. I think people are supporting Trump uh, often in spite of what he says as well as because of what he they says. They just want to screw things up. They no, just want to they, blow up no, the system. No, they're, they're no, against, Well, they're certainly against. No, they want a guy who's in charge. They want someone who's strong. They want someone who will be no nonsense in saying yes and no to things. A buffoon? You call him a buffoon. We may all think he's a buffoon. He never says anything. Uh, when he was talking about the let's talk about what he did on gay stuff this week. Absolutely. A lesbian reporter who says, I'm a lesbian. She's from ABC. I'm a lesbian. And she's asking him all these questions. And he tries to ingratiate himself with her. And he says, I want to bring everybody. Oh, uh, uh, gays, I want to bring everybody together, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Everybody thinks, oh, Trump's sympathetic to us. And then, of course, he sits down with George Stephanopoulos, who asks him four times, uh, you know, you you said in that it, you know that you would be uh, you might want to appoint Supreme Court justices who would uh, get rid of uh, the uh, decision on same-sex marriage. But he, and has he to just ask, kept avoiding that. Yes, because it's not one of his high agenda items. He has to be asked four times because he doesn't really want to say it. Oh, well, I, I am not defending Donald Trump. But uh, I just think someone it's who can't, much more fluid. Someone than who cannot just say, of course you should have equal rights, let's move on.
in the Republican primaries when you built your brand as hey, a right wing nut? He's built he's built his brand as being honest and brash. So what? What? <laughs> let's hear what he really thinks about this. He certainly told Muslims what he thinks about them. I want you all <laughs> to get out. I mean, that's pretty clear. I, that is true. Um, I, to be more specific, he doesn't want to let any more in. So uh, Hillary tried to undermine uh, Bernie on gay stuff by uh, digging up this uh, <laughs> proclamation from 1982 uh, for a mayoral, a mayoral proclamation for Marriage Week in Burlington, Vermont, when he was the mayor of uh, Burlington. And it celebrates, you know, heterosexual marriage. Well, it celebrates and, marriage. Yeah. I mean, they didn't even, did they even say heterosexual marriage? They said man and woman, but it wasn't said in the way that was anti-same-sex marriage because it was 1982. <laughs> exactly. And, <laughs> it wasn't on anybody's radar. No. I mean, there were a couple of cases, as we know, yeah. in the 70s. But uh, this but, this rally was to support, uh, you know, people not getting divorced or beating each other up. Right. It, that, that is grasping at straws it on was. her part, and uh, it could backfire because if her record gets dug up more on, if they can run tapes of her can, you know, saying marriage is between a man and a woman in 2004. Well, and his campaign replied, hey, I voted against the uh, Defense of Marriage Act when you were defending it. Yeah, so look, there are legitimate attacks that they, sh attacks or points that they should all be making, but I hope they don't engage in these kinds of distortions. And in 1972, Bernie was advocating for for decriminalization of homosexuality. Uh, well, uh, by the way, Kasich, when he gave his speech, he only got 16% of the vote, but he's number two and uh, was seen as a boost for him in New Hampshire. He sounded like a pastor when he was talking, but guess what he was going back to, to Ohio to do right away? Defund Planned Parenthood. So he is a hard right guy, despite the fact that he has softened a lot of his edges. Well, I thought, uh, it, you know, Trump was asked about Kasich and uh, was he a good governor? And Trump's response was, uh, well, he did okay because he allowed fracking. <laughs> And that's how the state got successful. And I thought, there we go again. By the way, if you're looking at the national political scene, the Victory Fund reports that of the 470 out LGBT officials in this country, 16 are Republican. Yeah. Uh, but what I wanted to get to actually in this political conversation, as you see the Bernie wave uh, and the tidal wave and the enthusiasm, is if you want to elect him and have him be effective, uh, this wave has to extend down a lot deeper into congressional races, local legislatures, city council races, and everywhere he says else. That. He says we need a revolution. I can't do this. He says I can't do this alone. Some people dismiss him and saying, oh, he can't, he's not going to be able to get anything done. Well, no Democrat's going to be able to get anything done. Obama can't get most things done. He has to do executive orders, and the Supreme Court's stopping him from doing some of those things. So, yes, you need a legislature. But to do that, let's explain it carefully to people. Yes. <laughs> you know, the House, everybody keeps saying, and it's true, the House lines, the way they're drawn now by legislatures in the, in the states dominated by Republicans, favor the Republicans. So more people vote Democrat in this country than Republican, but we have a dominance of Republicans in the House of Representatives because they drew the lines. And we're not going to get a chance to redraw the lines until 2022. And that means that the tw in the 2020 elections, you better elect uh, legislatures more disposed towards uh, fairer lines uh, or, you know, more, more liberal lines. That's, I, that's the next chance we have to do yeah, this. Yes, but I think some of that can be ameliorated uh, by grassroots action, uh, by the people demanding different things in big enough numbers. And, uh, and that is what Bernie is constructing for his campaign, but it has to be much more widespread well, I, and much I, I deeper. I would say this, and I'm, I don't want to disillusion people about, about their work. I think it's almost impossible to overcome the Republican advantage in the House until the lines are redrawn. There are no, there are so few swing districts in this country well, sure. at this stage. Uh, so, some of that is being challenged uh, locally, legally, and and we've won some uh, uh, some recent decisions. I would love it if all lines were drawn on a nonpartisan basis. Yeah, but what people can work on is issues. I mean, look at we're going to talk yes. about we're going to yes. talk we're going to talk about Martin yes. Shkreli and, that's what I mean. and pharmaceutical drugs and things. If you build up enough, Must we? 
energy around an issue, yes. you can even get Republicans to respond. Uh, that's my point, that it takes a grassroots movement that is really big, uh, and I go back to the Vietnam War. The, the war ended because people came out into the streets and demanded it yes. in big enough numbers. And uh, whatever the Congress wants or is, uh, if you have enough people uh, coming out into uh, the streets or online or wherever it happens these days, uh, that can make a difference. Well, in Tennessee, parents are coming out because they don't like the fact that Franklin County High School's got a gay-straight alliance. And they say it could lead to FEMA, which is uh, future ISIS members of America. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> FIMA. Some students uh, in the school. Or FIMA. Some. I think it's FIMA. All right. Some <laughs> some students in the school were wearing straight pride T-shirts to protest this this thing. But the director of the school said that uh, the gay LGBT group was properly formed. Uh, that uh, no further action was going to be taken on it, and the only other option, uh, if we ban the LGBT group, she said, was you're going to have to ban all student groups, which might be the price that you need to pay to keep gays from uh, organizing. It's the constant equation. And congratulations to uh, Hampton University, a one of the historically black colleges and universities in Virginia, which has finally approved an LGBT student organization, Mosaic. They've been working on that for years. In I think we need to do the Super Bowl. Oh, sure. The Stuper Bowl, uh, which is an even more relevant name for it now that we talk about concussions. But uh, there we have the Rainbow <laughs> Super Bowl. At I halftime. believe in love all over the stadium, rainbow yeah. colors. Rainbow colors on uh, the singers, everything. It was, it was, it was. Some of the singers, the Coldplay, not uh, Beyonce you know, or Bruno Mars. A, yeah. It was seen as a uh, endorsement of same-sex marriage. Did Franklin Graham go to this to protest? I don't know. Uh, well, there was a lot of debate online. I looked at some of the comments around the internet. Uh, some called it a homosexual rainbow conspiracy. Well, it was in Santa Clara, right, <laughs> right outside of San Francisco. And some were very happy about it. I, Gaga did very well with the national anthem. Uh, and Rudy it, Giuliani was very upset with Beyonce for being <laughs> anti-cop. Well, you know, I, I, I watched the show. I thought Beyonce and Bruno Mars were terrific, and but I couldn't quite get it. So I went online and looked at, first I looked at the lyrics of Beyonce's song, Beyonce's song and I thought, eh, I'm, I'm still not quite getting it. And then I saw the video. And the video is so fantastic. And then you get the lyrics and you get the whole uh, setup. And it, it really is a radical uh, Black Lives Matter song and really terrific. Which is why Rudy Giuliani didn't like it. And exactly. by the way, if you're thinking that Mike Bloomberg is an alternative on this election uh, to uh, all the rest of the candidates, we are here as New Yorkers to tell you he was a terrible mayor on LGBT rights, on uh, police enforcement, on shutting on down dissent, everything. Yeah. So you giving know, the town away to the you know, real estate interests. Just because. Uh, uh, but I like the smoking ban. Yes. Yes, uh, there's some too. debate about whether any of the Super Bowl ads were homophobic. There was some uh, concern about the Snickers ads where Willem Dafoe was Marilyn Monroe. But that's their whole campaign of having, uh, it, I've hated that campaign. I didn't see it as anti-trans. I was a little concerned that the uh, Marmot uh, outdoor gear ad was uh, homophobic. The guy and the Marmot, and then he tries to kiss the Marmot, and the Marmot says, I'm not that kind of Marmot. But others sort of saw it as uh, more benign. And there were some very uh, pro-gay images in some of the ads. There was uh, a house ball dancing in one of the ads. There were two women kissing in one of the ads. Uh, so there was some uh, very pro-LGBT stuff. But the saddest story coming out of the Super Bowl was this guy in San Francisco, Jeffrey Lafayette, who got badly beaten by what was perceived as a crowd of uh, Super Bowl fans from out of town who jumped him because he was wearing white pants. 
and he did a video for the uh, that's on YouTube, Jeffrey Lafayette. If you look that up, you'll find his video where he he stand he's beaten badly, and he does one of these things where he has a series of cards that he flips that talks about how he got beaten up and why and how horrible it was, and and yet how he survived and and is moving on, and they can't you know, in the end hurt him because he has self-respect. People get very tribal and, uh, you know, it, it has to be overcome. Yeah. All and, right. And speaking and, well, of... Well, I mean, speaking of beatings in New yeah. York City, we have a, a picture of her, Jennifer Louise Lopez, who's a very prominent trans activist in New York, was attacked on the D train. Uh, this uh, uh, perpetrator followed her off the train, punched her in the face. She's had to have some eye operations. Uh, she took video. Uh, she's the head of everything transgender in New York City, which is her group. Um, some commuters tried to help her, and some of them joined in and shouting anti-trans slogans. Terrible. Yes. Yes, thank you. That's liberal New York City. And in Arizona, we have our second uh, murder of a transgender person in the U.S. this year, a uh, trans man, Caden Clark. Uh, who was shot and killed by the cops. He uh, was living with the Asperger's, uh, was troubled, certainly, had called the um, uh, police to say he was feeling suicidal. Uh, they went out to see him. He had a knife, uh, and they ended up shooting him. I mean, the, the way, I'm just going to say, the way the police handled the mentally ill with a knife when they end up, I mean, there's got to be, I've seen... Throw a net over him, for God's that's sake. What, that's what they do in Britain when they when they confront the mentally ill. Nobody gets killed, nobody gets hurt. There's so many other ways to contain this than just to shoot them dead. And this guy was had been famous on the Internet for having, for having posted a video of himself with his dog, his dog helping him when he was having a an episode of of self-abuse and in, and jumping on him a little and, and pulling his hands off himself when he was hitting himself. Well, of course, if he were black, uh, he wouldn't even have to have a knife. He'd just have to reach in his pocket to get shot. If that. Yes. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, uh, also, a couple of other things in New York. Uh, the St. Patrick's Day Parade is, for the first time, going to have an Irish LGBT group in it. So Mayor de Blasio has said he's going to march with the LGBT group, and then he's going to march with the larger parade uh, entirely. So we hope all that works out. Uh, we've been fighting about it for 25 years. Yes. And then there's uh, what Governor Cuomo did this week. Um, we have not, because we have a Republican uh, uh, state legis uh, state senate in New York. We can't get a lot of legislation passed the way they do in California. State, so Senator Brad Hoylman, our senator, has a bill to ban conversion therapy for minors. This this anti-gay stuff. So the governor's council uh, they work through all the laws, and here's what they're going to do: they're going to curb conversion therapy by n no state funding or Medicaid reimbursement for it if you try to do it, and bar private insurers from doing it. Um, it's not a complete absolute ban, but it's close to it. Um, and, I, and licenses are threatened, too, yes. if you do it. I am concerned about the fact that a lot of this comes from religious groups anyway, so now they're not going to be able to get any reimbursement for it, <laughs> but there are still religious counselors that do it. And I asked them, you know, what about stopping, what about at least cutting off all funding to religious groups that are still counseling their kids that they're evil if they're gay? And... What they said was, if the group is getting state funding, they're not allowed to proselytize for their religion in the fun. You know, I don't know. I mean, I th I still think that's where the big problem is. Well, the Jonah group that got kicked out of New <laughs> yes. Jersey for doing uh, conversion therapy is now working in Israel, uh, where the government discourages conversion therapy but has not outlawed it yet, and, uh, as ours has not. And, and there are a lot of American or rabbinical students who are over there who are getting this counseling. Yes, high demand from the Orthodox for uh, yeah. conversion therapy. We, we, we didn't settle one crime story, and that's Philadelphia. Yeah. Back in 2014, there was a, a, a gang of uh, uh, people who were, you know, people out on the town who saw two gay guys and, and beat on them. Uh, two men took pleas in this, including the one who did most of the beating. But Catherine Knott, 25, would not take a plea, and she was convicted, and she has been sentenced just to five to ten months in jail. 
the judge asked how not a hospital worker could have walked away from the injured victim whose jaw was broken. Um, she was also ordered to get anger management and stay out of Philadelphia for two <laughs> years. But uh, this guy's jaw is not going to be healed completely yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And they said that's what disturbed them the most, that this crowd just walked away and left them there beaten. Uh, all right, uh, and let's whip through a few other stories. In Montana, Denise Juno, the first Native American to win statewide office there in Montana. Uh, she's 48, has come out publicly, and she's going to be running for the lone U.S. House seat for Mont Montana. Uh, uh, there were a couple of demonstrations this week at Christian universities and colleges. We have a picture of one at Biola University. Uh, complaining about the co students complaining that their colleges are asking for these Title IX waivers uh, uh, so that they can uh, avoid the laws against discrimination. We have that with the students and the big uh, statue of Jesus. Maybe the college. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe Biola. Not. Okay, well. Uh, there it is. Yes. Uh, Biola. File uh, uh, give back nine. That means uh, uh, retain Title IX protections against discrimination. Uh, and Soul Force is helping out with that. In New York City, Council, Council Member Rosie Mendez has been elected chair of the uh, now seven member LGBT caucus. The retiring chair is Corey Johnson, our council member. Uh, thank you to a viewer who corrected me a little on my discussion of Catholic charities stopping adoptions in Massachusetts. I said they did it when Massachusetts took away funding. Uh, when they wouldn't agree not to discriminate against gay parents. The fact is they did it before Massachusetts took away the funding because they were anticipating uh, problems and they just didn't want to give kids to uh, same-sex couples. Big push in New York to landmark Julius Barr in Greenwich Village uh, because on April 22nd, we're having, for first rather, we're having the 50th anniversary of how we won the, in 1966 the right to be served alcohol in bars. Uh, they went there for a sip-in. They were refused service. They challenged the regulation from the state liquor authority, and they won. Uh, and uh, that was one of my first bars in New York, but I didn't go to it until 1971. Uh, here's an issue that could come up in the South Carolina primary. A high school uh, had approved a trans uh, male student using the boys' room. He'd been doing it for three years. But a teacher uh, complained, finally, after three years of him without incident using the boys' room. So he's suddenly ordered to use the girls' room. Uh, he's a trans boy. Uh, or the nurse's uh, bathroom. And he doesn't, because that's not comfortable for him. And this poor kid has now been suspended from school. Well, Better, better news from the District of Columbia where the council mandated that health care providers have to get cultural competency training in LGBTQ issues to increase the comfort levels for the providers and the patients. And there's proposals to do it elsewhere, but this is the first one to pass. Uh, congratulations to Glenn Howenstein, who is the out gay new president of Delta Airlines. Uh, he's active with HRC in Atlanta, where Delta is headquartered, and he is he's one of the top out gay corporate executives in America. We Tim are. Cook, I guess, trumps them all, but, uh, but we he's, are everywhere. he's there. A couple of marriage notes? Uh, yeah, first, Al the Alley Forney Center has raised its initial $200,000 in its attempt to buy the Atla Church in New York. Which is a big anti-gay church that is yes. being foreclosed upon. Uh, Sirius XM Radio has shut down its uh, LGBT channel, Whoa. Sirius OutQ. Well, and the Ford Foundation shut down its specifically LGBT program. But we are not going to shut down Gay USA. <laughs> not today, anyway. No. Uh, but, you know, this is, oh, we've succeeded, we can be integrated, and, and yes, we are everywhere, as you just said, uh, but it's, uh, it's poignant to lose these outlets. And they're not going to shut down Kim Davis. Uh, the Kentucky judge and the, and, the merit, and the cases there, Judge David Bunning, denied the ACLU request that she reissue licenses that she had altered to take her name off. 
uh, her name, and uh, he, he said that the deputies issued the licenses and that they're likely to be honored in Kentucky. Yeah, that, that was the phrasing. <laughs> and that's the loophole. Oh, they're likely to be honored. <laughs> well, the governor has Give now issued his executive order that takes all clerks' names off of licenses, so at least there's some consistency. But, yeah, likely valid was not a, a heartwarming phrase. In Seattle, a Catholic high school has refused to allow one of its alumna to uh, put her wedding announcement to another woman in their uh, alumni magazine. And the class president from 97, uh, James Now, who's, who's not gay, wrote the archbishop and cited 1 Corinthians and said, if one is honored, every part rejoices with it. Uh, and he also noted that announcements are not vetted for divorcees or kids born out of wedlock. Did he call it one Corinthians? <laughs> <laughs> now that would be uh, uh, Mr. Trump. Yeah. In Texas, a Dallas County Justice of the Peace, uh, who is a devout Catholic, says he will not do non-traditional weddings. But then he decided, well, maybe if someone comes to me, who can tell? Maybe, maybe it's okay. Uh, <laughs> he's backtracking. And oh, we were going to show you a video that BuzzFeed put together where they interviewed a number of out gay men in the military. Yes. It's fascinating, but it's four minutes long, and we don't have time for it anymore. But go to BuzzFeed and search uh, out gay military men. I'm sure you'll find it. And, and we'll put a link to it on in it. Our, in the email that we send out every week. Uh, you can write, you can go to our website at gayusatv.org to sign up to get that weekly email. Yes. And by the way, uh, when you, <laughs> whenever you're having trouble with the transmission of this show, which sometimes happens in some places, in some neighborhoods and things like that, go to gayusatv.org. There's an audio podcast. There's it's video. a link, link to video on YouTube. We're always there. Always available. All right, online. international news. Yes. Well, Portugal, over, uh, the parliament there overrode the veto of the gay adoption bill, uh, 137 to 73, the left parties. And almost two to one. They only needed a simple majority, but they got almost two thirds. Right. Uh, and the president must now sign the bill after all, he has eight days. Uh, in uh, the country of Georgia, the former Soviet Socialist Republic, a lawyer there has asked a constitutional court to legalize same-sex marriage. This is considered a little unlikely as uh, an LGBT rally in Tbilisi three years ago, the capital, was attacked by a mob led by priests. <laughs> but good for you for standing up and asking for it. Who in knows? In Turkey. The high court there is considering a, uh, uh, the law requiring gender reassignment surgery for legal recognition of gender identity. Hope they overturn that. In Taiwan, the right wing is pushing to have a public referendum on same-sex marriage instead of a vote by the legislature because they don't think they're going to win a vote by the legislature. In Mumbai, India, 7,000 were at Pride, including many non-gay allies. It was their eighth parade, but of course this is all in the atmosphere of trying to overturn the sodomy law at the Supreme Court. Uh, and a screenwriter of the movie Aligar came out of the closet, which is, you know, not a, a big thing over there. And that movie was about the death of a gay professor who was kicked out of the Aligar Muslim University. In Greenland, same-sex marriages will begin to be performed on April 1st. No, it's not an April Fool's joke. They have gotten final parliamentary and royal assent. They're linked to Denmark. Yeah. Right. So still linked Greenland, to April 1st. And in Bermuda, they are debating uh, same-sex marriage or civil unions or something. Uh, the right wing uh, held a rally this week. Uh, they want, like uh, the right wing in Thailand, uh, Taiwan, a uh, public referendum uh, to ban same-sex marriage. But the Human Rights Commission is sort of standing tall and saying that the opinion of the majority should not impinge the right of equal treatment for minorities. And, the, and our side, the pro-marriage uh, crowd, came out in opposition to the right-wing rally. They were out there together. And actually, it's not too violent there in Bermuda. Uh, the right-wing rally included signs that say, 
we do not hate anyone. Well, the, the premier of the country came out and met with both sets of demonstrators yes. and talked to them. I think it's very civilized, which yeah. is That's nice. Wish, wish things could be like that here. Yeah. Uh, who knew that the United Nations had a postal administration? I didn't. But they issued a whole <laughs> series of stamps celebrating LGBT people. We have pictures of them. It's part of the Free and Equal campaign, that was and it was unveiled at the General Assembly with a with a, a sing a singing by the gay men's chorus of New York. It it, it has stamps and denominations from different countries, but there is a forty nine cent uh, U S stamp. If you're it's not a forever stamp. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Andy. All right. In uh, Argentina, uh, a trans woman, Lohana Birkins, who yes. was a very uh, famous activist there for Pioneering. 20 years, uh, helped pass the 2012 Gender Identity Law, director of the Gender Identity and so Sexual Orientation Office, uh, died at uh, approximately age 55. She said, uh, she wrote a letter to the public uh, before, shortly before her death. Uh, saying all the beatings that I took and all the neglect that I suffered, they do not compare to the endless love that surrounds me in these moments. And she called on us to continue fighting and the revolution's time is now. Uh, in Russia, a friendship between, we have a picture of this, a friendship between Amor the tiger and Timur the goat. Now, uh, uh, Timur was sent to uh, the tiger to be eaten as yes. a snack, and they made, fr they made friends with each other. But the fact that the press is playing it up so much, and the fact that they're both males, is having the prosecutor, I, this is a true story, this is not the onion, looking into whether this violates the law against non-traditional <laughs> sexual relations promoted to children. And the, guy, the opponent of this said it's hidden propaganda, and you know, you can't be too careful. Uh, we, uh, we are not saying that they are having any sexual relations. They're both, but they're friends and they're males and it's being promoted. <sighs> well, uh, you know, that's the ridiculous. Uh, the horrible is in Kuwait, mm. where a lesbian couple who are former members of the U.S. military uh, and now working as contractors for the military in Kuwait have been framed on false drug charges uh, they were uh, found to possess a tiny amount of some drug that's legal in Kuwait, and then they th they came up with some report that no, it was some other drug, uh, which was a complete lie. And they have now been sentenced to 25 years in prison. 25 years in prison. This lesbian couple. What is Secretary K Kerry doing about this? Exactly. What is Ash Carter doing about it? The Secretary of Defense. Uh, these. Uh, this is unbelievable that these women have been sentenced to 25 years in Co prison in Kuwait. I'm glad I never got that job in Kuwait. Well, it certainly is uh, believed to have a lot more to do with their sexual orientation and their relationship than with any uh, drug uh, use by either one of them. Right. Terrible story. Uh, and, <laughs> and there's some controversy in Spain where a Basque court has okayed a name change, a gender identity name change for a trans child a tra little trans girl, four years old. We're making some progress. Maybe it's not so controversial. They've right. actually done it. All right, AIDS news and other health news. Well, everybody saw the hearing with Martin Shkreli, uh, the, this, this punk that everybody wants to smack and who was taking the Fifth Amendment and he's the one who boosted drug prices. And to watch all these congressmen, Republican and Democrat, scold him and chastise him and how dare you and you're a horrible person. But they're the ones with the power to change the laws so that we can get pharmaceutical prices under control in this country, and they won't do it. Well, they're the ones passing all these trade agreements, too, which do nothing but prop up the uh, pharmaceutical companies worldwide and forbid the countries we're making these agreements with from uh, uh, getting generic alternatives. You must uh, respect U.S. patents for many, many years. You must pay these high prices. Uh, Martin Shkreli is a sideshow, folks. Do not be taken in. Yeah. All right. I mean, uh, he's a bad guy, but you know. Yeah. Interest, some interesting studies, several of them this week. Uh, there, uh, I'm trying to see well, who did one, this one study. Well, one of them was from Yale, uh, and it said that 
uh, higher state spending on duh, higher state spending on social services and public health, including education and income support, is correlated with lower HIV AIDS cases and death rates. Shocking. Uh, well, uh, and we learned this, I learned this week that Florida now leads the United States in new AIDS cases after years of cuts in public health. Miami-Dade and uh, uh, Broward County were number one and two in the country. Well, uh, you mentioned a Yale study. Here's another study out of Harvard and Yale, which said that uh, uh, psychological health improves for trans people, male and female, uh, when you actually give them hormones. <laughs> <laughs> Another shocking stop the presses moment. Uh, the details of this uh, have been published in a new journal called Transgender Health. Uh, giving people hormones when they want them and need them helps alleviate depression and anxiety. Wow. Uh, and there was a very interesting study about uh, people who are HIV positive and their alcohol use and the effect on uh, them. Uh, the uh, uh, researchers looked at the Veterans Aging Cohort Study, and they picked out 42,000 people uh, who are HIV negative and 18,000 who are HIV positive, and they looked at their mortality rates and, uh, and their injury rates and on different levels of drinking. And they found that uh, those who were uh, that those who are HIV positive had uh, mortality and injury rates on 30 drinks a month that were equivalent to the HIV negative on 70 drinks a month. Mm -hmm. So uh, having HIV tends to make you uh, more vulnerable on less alcohol, even if you're undetectable. Apparently. Oh, absolutely. Uh, now, you can read the details of this study uh, at drugandalcoholdependence.com. They have the details. In the United Kingdom, uh, they don't give people PrEP. I mean, they have a national health service, but they don't give people PrEP. So gay men go in and lie about having had unsafe sex so that they can get PEP to use it as PrEP. <laughs> Clever. Well, uh, but in this country, of all places, Fulton County, Georgia, has just opened a prep clinic and at no cost, no, free exams, free pills, free follow-ups. Come and get them uh, because uh, some of them will be covered by insurance, and and the rest are. This is being supplied by Gilead, yes. which makes Truvada, and Gilead has been one of these uh, vulture capitalist kind of withholding, companies, very withholding, uh, very profitable. But so is, they're doing this. This is aimed at young men who have sex with men, HIV negative uh, people who are in relationships with HIV positive people, and women in high, high risk, risk categories. Yeah, but it's uh, people are really lobbying for this all over, and it would be great to have these clinics widely available. Uh, congratulations to one of our viewers, uh, a trans woman who uh, <laughs> who was on hormones as a trans woman and was told by Medicare Advantage that, well, now you're 67. As a woman, you don't need hormones anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I'm transgender. <laughs> and she she won. She won her I case, hope so. but she had to come out uh, in the process. Well, but well. Uh, you know, it was a great thing, and you never know when you're going to be an activist and under what circumstances. And this was uh, this uh, well, for that, those of you who are aging trans women on hormones, uh, you can appeal any denial of services like that. Well, it just sound, also sounds like ageism. Exactly, but you know, they were essentially saying you're postmenopausal. <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> It's a whole other issue. Uh, in uh, uh, Northwestern University had a study this week that says severely bullied LGBT youth have long-lasting uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome and they need intervention and treatment. Anybody but, who's bullied, I would say, also goes through that. And people who were bu bullied severely as kids, they just never, you know. I mean, my brother, my brother was a fat kid and he says, you never forget how people treated you. Yeah under those circumstances. Uh, well, I don't know that any of us ever forget uh, any kind of severe criticism. And uh, if you're really the 
object of uh, severe bullying, right. so much the worse. Right. Uh, TAG, the Treatment Action Group, and a group called Médecins du Monde uh, have started a new website called MAP crowd.org for hepatitis C information, resources, and data collection. Mapcrowd.org, okay. hepatitis C. Couple of entertainment news notes. Yep. Well, uh, let's put up this picture and get people's attention from the VH1 <laughs> basketball Whoa. show, Hit the Floor. Well, I didn't know about this thing, but it's mostly about cheerleading, but it has a steamy <laughs> gay male passion between the player in the back there Zero, his name is Zero, and his agent, Jude. I mean, <laughs> television is certainly moving forward. <laughs> well, we'll see how forward it's moving uh, when ABC shortly starts airing The Real O'Neills in a couple of weeks. Uh, oh, okay. This is Dan Savage's family story. Uh, it's not Dan Savage grown up uh, licking Pat Buchanan's <laughs> uh, doorknobs with the flu. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I still think was amusing. I, you hated I it. I don't. No, I know. We uh, we differ occasionally, uh, but it's uh, the story of his growing up. It's an uh, Irish American family with a gay son. So the real O'Neill well, son. Gonna be good. ABC. I, you know how much I liked Act of God on Broadway with uh, Jim Parsons. Well, uh, if you're in L.A. Sean Hayes is going to do the role. Uh, uh, he's going to play God, and it's a comedy, and uh, it's directed by out gay Joe Mantello. And you saw an exhibit at the Morgan Library. This is the gayest thing in New York. It's called. And that's saying a lot. It's called Warhol by the Book. Uh, it's uh, and by the way, the, the the Morgan is free on Fridays from seven to nine. There's one of its books that he made while Andy Warhol was establishing himself in the 50s to try to impress publish, you know, people in the industry, but also, it seems, basically to get laid. He, he made these books to impress men so that he to, speak. To, to, to impress <laughs> men that he was in love with. He would use them as models and draw their pictures yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's also a, very, very funny. I mean, you go there and it's a, an exhibit where you actually read things. And Andy says a lot of funny things, especially in those days. <laughs> so have fun. Go to the Morgan. It's free on Fridays from 7 to 9. It's over there on the east side of Manhattan in the 30s. All right. We have 45 seconds. Well, I mean, I, I didn't do this story, but how about the, uh, the fact that one of the abuse victims on the, on the Vatican's panel appointed by the Pope to look into this is being iced out by the other panelists because he's speaking up? about how the thing is malfunctioning. And he won't leave, he says, until the Pope fires him. So let's see what Francis does about that. Well, it's just uh, yet another example of how the actions do not match the rhetoric. Right. And right. It's, uh, it's discouraging. Yeah, well. terrible. So uh, what's coming up on the political calendar this week? <laughs> uh, Democratic debate uh, Thursday night. It'll be gone by the time we get uh, to this. But the Republicans, I think, are debating in South Carolina this right. weekend. And on uh, uh, Saturday at, uh, I think it's 2.30 at the center, uh, my friend Bernard Lynch, they're gonna sh he's going to be there and they're going to show his film, uh, AIDS, A Priest Testament. Okay. At the center. And we'll be back here next week. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.